Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to talk about the Admiralty system in Star Trek Online. So to access the Admiralty system, what we're going to do is come up right underneath our mini-map right in the center, and we are going to click on Duty Officers. And within Duty Officers here, we have a number of different tabs. You might drop in on one of the other ones. We're going to Admiralty. Now, the Admiralty system has four different uh, factions or alliances. Um, you have the Federation, Klingon, Romulan, Ferengi. And each one of these is going to have a ton of rotating missions, basically. is, is You could look at this or assignments. Um, so you'll have three that you can pick from, and then it'll show the next two that will be up. Um, in order to progress through this, what you'll do is you'll click on Plan, and you'll be presented with some uh, requirements. Um, so if you have, uh, on this particular one, we have engineering, tactical, science uh, at 40, all of them. So you'll always have all three of these. These numbers will vary. You'll click on select, and you'll have a list of all of your Admiralty cards. We'll get to Admiralty cards here in just a moment, how to get those and where they come from. Um, so what you'll want to do is scroll through your Admiralty cards and put a combination of ships in that are going to meet the requirements here, at least 40 in each for this particular one. So I'm just going to pick a few of these here. And there we go. So I've kind of overkilled. If you were going through this and you have a very limited number of ships, you would want to make sure that you're using ships that are just giving you enough so you're saving other ones to be able to do potentially the next mission. Um, so now that I've met all of these, we have some event or urgent distress calls, what they call it here. So we have plus 30, all required, uh, plus 100% crit chance rate. Uh, to be 100% honest with you guys, I'm not exactly sure what that means, um, why this is here or, or what it does, if this is a part of the adding to the crit chance of it. Uh, let me know in the comments, guys, what this part does for us here is this something where we need plus 30 on all um you know and 100 on the crit rate uh critical uh, rate uh, really not sure in any case i progressed pretty far through this thing without actually paying attention to that so um if you're brand new which this is really what it's for is just an overview of the system um we'll find out here in the comments shortly what exactly this part does for you um so forgetting about that, um, by completing this particular assignment, you're going to get 3,000 and some change XP, and then we're also going to get some XP that go towards um, this um, this faction here, Federation. So let's go ahead and begin it. That was a 15 mission uh, minute mission. After that's up, I can go ahead and click in, and it'll be completed here. Um, so you'll see it listed. I had some running from earlier, so I can go ahead and ignore these and get them out of there so these aren't like a 24 hour kind of thing um so you'll be able to do these you know if you're doing a session for a couple hours you'll be able to slot a bunch of them complete them and then you know slot a few more before you get off um and each one of these factions are going to basically be exactly the same in the way that you go about doing that um so there are missions that will come up along here that are tour the uh or of duty and you'll see it here at the top. So the Federation, uh, if you complete all 10 of them, you will get um, two specialization points. Um, you can use these, obviously, to fill out your specializations. If you've completed your specialization, so they're all completely filled out and there's nothing you can do with this, it will reward you dilithium instead of the specialization points. Um, so once you get far enough along, this is a nice place to kind of farm this kind of thing out. Um, I'll show you what, well, let's look at the rest of the rewards. They're different for each of these, and then we'll take a look at the uh, Tour of Duty. Uh, so for the KDF, uh, you will get a uh, 40,000 Fleet Dilithium when you complete the Tour of the Duty, or of Duty, not of the Duty. Uh, for Romulan, you will get um, some Ultimate Tech Upgrades, so they're not up to ultimate they're universal so there's no dilithium required um, they're not as good as the phoenix upgrades in my opinion um, but they're still free upgrades and nice and then for the rangi uh, we would get a dilithium or bonus pool so what that is um, i have my bar up top here turned off but if if you look up in the top right, if you're running any kind of XP boost or anything like that, essentially this is a dilithium boost. So anytime you earn dilithium, you'll get an extra percentage of whatever you just earned um, until you use up all 30,000. 
of that. So in the past, they used to actually just give a straight up or and they changed that. It was uh, straight up or for both the uh, KDF and for this. But that was changed a while back, similarly to what they just did to reputation tier five reward. Um, so this one will now um, not give you the or it gives you the bonus pool. So you still get that free or it just takes some time where you're getting it a little bit at a time as you're earning it throughout the game methods. Um, let's see here. So we have a tour of the galaxy up here slotted and it's the same as any other mission. You would click in plan and move forward with it. Let's say that it was um, uh, in the next up here, but it was all the way over here and you don't care about doing the rest of these. Okay. You just want to farm through tour of the gal or tour of duty. Um, you can use pass tokens, but they're kind of far and few between. You don't get tons of these. These are rewards that you'll get from doing just the the random missions here. The other way to skip through these, let's say that you know three of ten was actually down here, and I needed to skip through two to get it up here. What you could do is click into one. I'm not going to save that one. It's 500 lithium. Um, and then what you could do is just slot any ship you want. So I would just do you know, a runabout shuttle or something like that. And do it. It's got an hour cooldown, and now that one's out of the way, and you would be one step closer. You could then slot another one. Basically, you're just kind of a throwaway. You have to slot it so that you can get it out of the way. Um, so you can use the pass tokens, or you can just actually play it and complete them, or you can just put in a super low tier ship um, and use that to basically get past it quickly. Um, and then as these come up, these come up every anywhere between you know five to ten or so missions. Um, but you know, I, I would recommend running these missions. I mean, you'll see like the one we clicked in a second ago, we would get 500 dilithium from that as well as some um, crafting materials, uh, XP for this particular faction, and then also just some basic XP for ourselves. Um, some of these will reward a couple hundred thousand, uh, EC. Um, there's others that'll give smaller amounts of, uh, ore and maybe a larger pot down here. Some of them can be fairly large, a thousand or a little bit more, if I remember correctly. It's been a little while since I've been grinding through this particular system, but you can get quite a good amount of EC and dilithium and XP by running through this system. You'll also get one-time use Admiralty cards. And again, we'll touch on what Admiralty cards are and how you get those here in just a moment. Um, and those are nice to hang on to when you get farther down the chains of these so that um, you can get through some of the um, assignments that have higher requirements. Um, so one thing to note is these, once you reach tier 10 on this, it'll reset back to zero and you can run through it again. So you, you can endlessly run through this. Same thing with all of these missions. They just constantly recycle. And there's quite a few of them in here. Um, because you have 10 of these spread out through every 5 to 10 or so. So you can you know do the math there. There's there's quite a bit. Um, once you complete them, it just starts over and you can just keep grinding it. Once you've completed this out like I have on these three, I'm at max level on it. And, you know, that's, you know, congratulations to me. Um, you know, it doesn't really make any kind of big difference because everything just kind of keeps going back through. Uh, but the main takeaway for me on this and the way I used it on my free-to-play is... Uh, I would run through this for the ore, the EC, and being able to get, you know, the spec points, the dilithium pool, um, some decent resources over time. You're not going to get any kind of like, you know, drop where it's just a huge one-time chunk, but it'll steadily, you know, gain you quite a bit of resources, especially if you're doing it on more than one character. Um, so we touched on how to get to the Admiralty system, how to progress through the Admiralty system, tour of duty, how to progress through that, how to skip things, the different kinds of rewards that you can get from going through this. So now let's talk about Admiralty cards. Um, so let's just go ahead and click into one of these so we can see. So I have um, this Admiralty card matches a shuttle that I have. Um, same thing with basically every other thing in here. Now the Phoenix um, ships here, they come from Phoenix packs uh, from the event. So when you do the event and you get your free one a day, it'll give you one of these. These are nice for just kind of skipping through or uh, ignoring event modifiers. Okay, so that's what that is. We were talking about that before. So event modifiers uh, make a uh, change what's required. And if you slot one of these, then it'll get rid of it. So let's just do that just to see here. Get sidetracked, but... Um, yeah, I didn't see any changes on the numbers. So again, guys, let me know what's going on with the event modifiers. So I'm, I'm not 100% clear on that. Um, so back to the ships. So shuttles, ships, anything, any ship that you have, be it one that you got while you were leveling 
or an event ship, or if you've purchased a sea store ship, every single one is going to have a Admiralty card associated with it. And so when you purchase the ship, immediately that card will show up here. If it's an event ship, as soon as you claim it, that Admiralty card will show up here. In the past, you had to actually claim the ships uh, from the sea store. So if you had, say, 20 ships and you rolled a new character and you wanted all the cards, you'd have to claim them and discard them or claim them and keep them. It was a nightmare. Now, once you reach the level of unlocking the system, um, it's just automatically going to claim all the Admiralty cards for all the sea store ships that you own, any of the ships that you have available to you. Um, so that's where cards will come from, is, is basically they're associated with any ship that you have. There's a couple other ways um, to get them, or let's talk about a couple other ships that I recommend, especially for your budget and free-to-play players. If you go to the exchange and you look at Mirror Universe ships, they're, I think, either Tier 4 or Tier 5 ships. They're extremely cheap, and they uh, not only unlock the... Um, the Mirror Universe skins for any of the other variants of the particular ship, but they also give you an Admiralty card because they're a ship. And while they're not the best Admiralty cards in the game, they do pretty well at one of the disciplines. So what I mean by that is if you get one of the Mirror Universe ships and it's one of, say, like the, the one of the science ships or something like that, the science rating on it's going to be pretty decent, you know, 40 to 50 to 60 the rest of them, though, the engineering and tactical are going to be a little bit low and vice versa. If it's a tactical style ship, tactical is going to be really high, but the other ones are going to be pretty low. So they're just not well balanced, but they're nice for kind of filling in the gap. Or if you really, you know, you get one where sometimes, you know, these are way out of whack. This one's kind of like that, where science is twice as much as the other two. Well, having a mere universe science ship might be helpful, you know, to be able to get over that hump and get close to or to what is required here. So do remember that the success rate is based is a chance. So if you meet the requirements, 100% chance, but if you're a little bit under it, you still have a very good chance if you're at 95% of being able to complete this assignment. So the mirror universe ships are, 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 in my opinion, very good, good budget way to kind of fill in those gaps and get yourself some more Admiralty cards. The other way, um, or one of the other options for getting Admiralty cards is in the uh, Phoenix store. So if you get Phoenix packs from the Dilithium store here, you go to special items and grab yourself some boxes and open them. You get a blue one. Blue ones can be redeemed for Admiralty cards, and these are decent ones here. Um, it doesn't give us the, the stats on them. You'd have to look them up, um, but they are decent. They're Tier 6 equivalents um, that you would get from any Tier 6 ship and worth grabbing at least. And just so I'm clear, I, I do not have this particular one from here. This might be the same as the event one. I do on my free to play, however, though, have this one, this one, and this one, and they're all three of those are tier six equivalent Admiralty cards. All right, and one other one that you can get for free in the game that has a very good or is a very good Admiralty card is the Sally Rider. So the Sally Rider is sitting here in space, and let's just show you guys where we're at here. So if you jump into the beta quadrant, and you head over to the Narendra, Narendra sector, to the Narendra system, you will find this Intrepid class ship, the Sally Rider, sitting right on the far side of the planet. If you approach it and you talk to them, I've already claimed it, but you'll have some other dialogue here. You'll click on it a couple times, and it will give you an Admiralty card for this ship. So you don't get the ship, but you get the Admiralty card for it, and it's very, very good got an extremely high science uh, rating and the engineering and tactical are well balanced to go with that it's one of the best ones especially if it's a science heavy um, assignment that you're doing in the game um, so I would definitely recommend running over here and picking this up I would grab anything that's cheap um, shuttles um, you, you could even potentially if you have some extra dill um, you could pick some up from the uh, fleet vendor pick up some lower level ships you could use for skipping if you want to skip or any of the tier five ships can be useful in completing these missions because it's on a rotating thing. It doesn't infinitely get harder. So you'll get towards the end of the rotation and there will be some really high, you know, requirement missions on there, but that'll end up rotating back around and you'll have missions that are very, very easy. And so I generally am going to try and meet, just meet the requirement. I don't want to use ships that are going to far exceed the requirements because I may need those ships on the next couple that pop up. Um, and if, you know, if you do this when you log in and then when you log out, you can get through quite a bit of it. Um, so having, you know, extra ships obviously is helpful or, or not ships, but Admiralty cards 
and and they don't have to be the best ones in the world um they just you know be, because of that that scale uh that scaling requirement depending on the assignments that you're running there so that's a, a number of different ways that you can get, you know, budget or free stuff. Um, basically, anything that's a ship in the game is going to give you one. And uh, there's also from the Phoenix store and from the Sally Rider here some places to just grab cards by themselves. So they're not attached to any particular ship. Um, all right, well, let's make sure we didn't forget anything. I think we covered all the basics. Again, this is really intended for, you know, newer players. Um, they're just starting out. So this is one of the last systems that I needed to cover uh, for the beginner's guide series um, in the game here this one went last because to me it's kind of lowest impact um, for me uh, i do know that you know a couple of my friends and a couple you know other people you know have told me they use this system heavily to grind ec and dilithium probably i'm guessing would need to do that on multiple tunes but i could see like i said if you were playing for a few hours every other day or whatever and when you logged in you queued all these up and when you logged out you claimed any of the ones that were done re queued it all up and then logged out and you know, repeated every time you logged in if you're doing that on a couple tunes i could see that adding up to quite a bit pretty darn fast um so that is the admiralty system guys i hope that was helpful if you made it all the way to the end of the video i appreciate you watching and i would assume it's helpful if you did so uh thank you very much i really appreciate all you guys and until next time have a good one and thank you for watching hey guys appreciate you watching be sure to hit the thumbs up button ring the bell and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides